Hi guys, so Boris Johnson was invited to speak, for some reason, to the Institute of Politics and Public Service hosted by the Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Now, he was challenged by a member of the audience, perhaps a student, on the issue of Brexit. The former Prime Minister responded with rudeness, arrogance and lies. He dismissed the idea that Brexit was harming the UK economy and tried to steer the conversation away from the UK's exit from the EU. When pushed, he claimed that Brexit had been thoroughly debated and that the public knew what they were voting for. Of course, lies. Have a listen to this. I'm Gian. Uh, I was born in London but lived in New York most of my life. Right. Uh, and I'm a first-year student uh, studying economics here at Georgetown. Um, you've spoken a bit about Brexit. I wanted to push you a bit about it. Um, today, more people in the UK, as of today, believe Brexit was a failure rather than a success. Leaving the EU has sliced 5% off the UK GDP and made oh, the country rubbish. poorer. <laughs> I'm a UK-US dual citizen, and I worry about the current uh, economy's trajectory. Um, there's been no trade deal with the US, as promised, um, and leaving the single market has been demonstrably disastrous. Ooh, Bob. I've just given you... I've just, I've, anyway, no, Let Bob. me continue. Okay. Do, do you think that a democratic procedure like the Brexit referendum is truly democratic if voters are only offered two choices without adequate information about the consequences and don't true democracies allow us to change our mind after facing the real consequences and express a more comprehensive view such as rejoining the single market instead of simply just voting to leave or remain? Similar in the US, we have just two options. Many people don't just like those two options. Shouldn't we have more options in a true democracy? Well, I Wonderful question. And the idea that people need to be informed about what they're voting for. I think I think, you, but, but you surely do have more than two options, don't you? We have Joe Biden and Donald Trump. I, 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 yeah. aren't, there, aren't there independent candidates? They have no chance of winning. Well, hang on. Look, Boris Johnson knows. Well, why is he asking this question? He knows that independent candidates have pretty much zero chance of winning the presidency. I'm a self-fulfilling prophecy. Why do you say that? They're kicked off the ballot on many states because of the power of the DNC and the RNC. Well, no, I, I think I, I, you know, I, I think that. But this, this was about Brexit. Sorry, it was not about the U.S. Yeah. yeah. So, so what, what I'm what I'm saying is, I think you do have you do have options in you know, if everybody voted for uh, the the candidate that you just mentioned, uh, if everybody voted, is it RFK? Is that right? Yeah. If you vote, everybody, if everyone, hands up in this room, who's going to vote for RFK? There you go. He, uh, he's got he's got he's got about three supporters. He can build on that. <laughs> He's got time. Mr. Chair, the question was about Brexit. So, so, uh, so I'm, so I'm rejecting. I'm rejecting your kind of binary. Your binary. Well, in, in Brexit, and, just leave it. And leave it so, away. so in the Brexit referendum campaign, it, I don't think the the elections are necessarily binary. But in the in the in the Brexit referendum campaign, actually, the the issues were exhaustively debated, and I, I happen to know because I I, I did it. And we went through with the public again and again what you had to, leaving the EU meant. And it meant leaving the single market. And it meant coming out of the customs union. Lies. Lies once again. But these are lies from Boris Johnson. As soon as Boris Johnson opens his mouth, all that comes out is lies. There was no debate about leaving the single market and the customs union. Daniel Hanan who was appointed to the House of Lords by Boris Friggin Johnson, said in 2015, nobody's talking about leaving the single market. So, when you had Brexiteers, leading Brexiteers, not some guy down the street, but Daniel Hanan, a, leaning, a leading Brexiteer, telling the public, it's okay to vote for Brexit because nobody's talking about leaving the single market. And then you have Boris Johnson in 2024 saying, yes, we explained that, le that voting to leave the European Union would involve leaving the single market and the customs union. These are lies once again. Boris Johnson probably thinks, well, I can tell my lies in the US because people probably don't know that much about Brexit. <sighs> Why was he invited to speak? What does he add to the discussion? We know he's a liar and a charlatan. What is the point in giving a platform to a liar and a charlatan? It meant taking back control. It meant having the legal power to do your own thing. 
And the- what does that mean? The legal power to do your own thing. What is this thing you're talking about? The UK, what he would probably suggest is, well, we, now we can do our own trade deals. Okay, but how has that worked out? We know that being part of the European Union means you can get a better deal than if you're on your own. If you're negotiating with a large economy or even a small economy, you're going to get a better deal if you're part of a bigger organization. Look at what happened with New Zealand and Australia and compare that with what happened with New Zealand and Australia on the European side. The reason that's important is because unless you have the legal power to do your own thing, you can't respond to the needs of, of your people. No, you are holden to EU laws. Like, you don't, have a deci- you, you don't make a decision anymore when it comes to new re- regulations that the EU is putting in place. The UK used to be at the table making the decisions. Now you have to follow the decision. You're a rule taker, not a rule maker. And I've tried to give you one example of that, which was the vaccine rollout. I'm not even... So he goes into the rest of this about the vaccine rollout, about how, yes, we, we were able to roll out the vaccine before European... Con- which is, of course, false. And I've covered this, I don't know how many times already. So for some reason... Boris Johnson is being paid a significant amount of money to tell lies once again. He was paid a, a significant amount of money when he was a journalist to tell lies. He was paid a significant amount of money as mayor of London to tell lies. Where, well, he used that to tell lies. And then when he became an MP, he was telling lies. And then when he was prime minister, he was telling lies. Now that he's no longer an MP or the prime minister... He's doing the rounds, telling more lies. And unfortunately, people are willing to pay him significant sums to to, to tell those lies. It has to stop. He needs to go away. We're tired of Boris Johnson. And unfortunately, he wants to get back into politics. And some people within the Conservative Party think that he can help them win a general election again. Look, Boris Johnson won an 80-seat majority in 2019 based on lies. He told people he would get Brexit done. He told people that if they voted for him and his party, he would be able to get Brexit out of the way so that Britain could focus on other things like rebuilding the NHS or levelling up or creating jobs or growing the economy. He lied to people. He told the people in Northern Ireland that there wouldn't be a border in the Irish Sea. He spoke at the DUP conference telling them there would be no border in the Irish Sea while at the same time the infrastructure was being built and ministers and the civil service were preparing for that bureaucracy. He's a liar and a charlatan and for some reason, I still can't get my head around it, people are willing to pay him money to hear his lies. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.